Hello. Hard to see the audience with the lights. Many among you here are excellent, thank you. So many among you here are CISOs, like myself. And some of you may argue with me on that. Come on, Christine, my title doesn't say CISO. I'm Director of Security, VP of Security, Head of Cybersecurity, whatever variations thereof. Okay, but let me ask you this. What is the ask for your role? Is it to secure your organization against a cyber attacks or variation, for instance, like to enable the organization to secure itself? Because if it is, you're performing the role of a CISO. And those kinds of statements, like securing the organizations against a cyber attack, it sounds deceptively simple, isn't it? But it's anything but, because cybersecurity as a field is still fairly immature and not very widely understood. And CISOs, of course, as a position, is fairly new. And with this immaturity comes challenges on what kind of vocabulary we're speaking. So on one hand, we tend to use quite a technical vocabulary using the language of the technologies and services that we are using as solutions to the threats that we're having. And then on the other hand, recently there's also been a trend to try to use a more business language. Because we have been accused that we have been too technical in our language and we have been alienating executive teams and the board of directors with the language that we're using. And it's a fair feedback, because these are the positions who would need to govern risk management in the organization as well. So they need to understand what we're doing. But neither of these two extremes are helpful to CISOs, especially when the cybersecurity program of an organization is still fairly immature. Because what happens in a CISO's life is that they need to navigate the different layers of the organization just to gain understanding, alignment, and to make sure their cybersecurity program is executed. And to make it happen, they need to create models that would work for these different layers of the organization. They pile up work on themselves to do this because they need to do their jobs. And it's no wonder many of us are exhausted. Now, what if there's a way and Laura alluded to this with her talk as well earlier, where we are able to put in the language that executives understand and the information they're looking for, as well as a starting point for execution in a singular page that we can always go back to, to reflect and to gain understanding, alignment, and execution. And if there's a way, then that could be helpful for us. And today, I would like to introduce you to the first version of the Security Outcomes Canvas. Now, many of you here may be familiar with the Business Model Canvas already. And this is taken or is inspired by the Business Model Canvas. And of course, if we're using the Business Model Canvas, then executives and a board of directors are very familiar with it. So we get brownie points already from that level. But going back to the business model canvas, so, or the security outcomes canvas, so this has seven areas that we are filling up in here. And it starts with the business outcomes. Now, when we talk about business outcomes, what are these really? This goes back to the organization itself and what it's trying to accomplish. It could be the strategy, but at times the strategies are actually quite short-lived versus the actual business outcomes that could actually go throughout a longer life cycle within the lifetime of an organization. So work with a strategy, but work with your executives and your stakeholders as well to understand what the organization is really aiming to accomplish. And then afterwards, we talk about the risk. So what are the primary risks to the business outcomes? And CISOs are very familiar with their risk registers. Laura has mentioned as well that we have a lot of risks that we're trying to mitigate, but try to really zoom in to the top three to five risks, or you may even call it meta-risks, that are actually impacting the business outcomes. So 
These are the risks that reduce the business outcomes chances of happening. And once you have identified this, and be very brutal about cutting it down to three to five, once you have identified this, then you can talk about security outcomes. And you need to be linking the three of this, because security outcomes are the ones that help reduce the risks to the business outcomes, so that the business outcomes can be accomplished. And maybe you may have a question like, Christine, why do you put security outcomes at the center instead of business outcomes? So we have talked about outcome-based security for a year now. And one of the feedback that we have gotten is that it's actually challenging, especially for security practitioners, to link the initiatives that we do directly to the business outcomes. And therefore, security outcomes, they're like the glue, the central point to which we can link the initiatives. And these are the security outcomes that actually help accomplish the business outcomes by reducing the risks. And then one box, which is my particular favorite, what are the opportunities that the organization already has, even without you as a CISO pushing them forward? Like they are already there. Your IT may be transforming, you may be digitizing, you may be cloudifying. That's an opportunity that you can actually ride on in order to accomplish your security outcomes. So this is something that you may not even need to start yourself. But you can just raise your hand and say like, hey, can we embed cybersecurity into that as well? And then after we're done with the right side of the canvas, we move to the left side, which is more the meat on the bone. So this is the stuff that, for example, your technical people will not call too fluffy anymore. And then let's talk about what are the existing and what are the upcoming initiatives that you either already have or you will need to do in order to accomplish these security outcomes. And I caution you regarding these initiatives because this is a one-pager. And Laura as well was mentioning that maybe we are piling up different initiatives, different things already in our organizations, that once you're feeling this, when it becomes too long, when they become too many, and you can barely fill them in, maybe it becomes a question of, is there something that you need to do? Resources, CISO is very much, very much um, familiar with people, processes, and technology, and this is also divided according to that category. And then finally, the cost. And when it comes to the cost, if there is a way to assign monetary values to the cost, that would be really brilliant because it makes the CFOs like very easy for them to take a look at this and say, like, okay, this is the cost of your cybersecurity program. But of course, if you can just get to the level of the item that you can actually assign costs, even if you don't know the cost in the first place, then that will already be very valuable. So all right, then you have your security outcomes canvas that you can test out in your organizations. So just to reiterate, so how do you fill this in? I've already sort of like given it away by um, the sequence that I'm going through the different areas in the canvas, but I'll go through it one more time. So first, identify the business outcomes and agree, especially with executives in your organization, that these are the outcomes that we are aiming to achieve as a business. Second, what are the risks to those outcomes? Forget about your risk register. Maybe some of the risks are already there, but this is about linking those risks to the business outcomes. And then security outcomes, the ones that are able to address these risks so that you can accomplish these business outcomes or these business outcomes have a better chance of coming into fruition. Major opportunities in the organization that are already happening or will happen key initiatives, list them down, key resources, people, processes, and technology, and then the cost. All right, so does it really work? Let's test it out. Um, let's test it out, and then you tell me. So firstly, um, let's say with Secure. So a cybersecurity organization, what are the business outcomes that we're aiming to achieve, for instance? We would like to have credibility in the way that we secure ourselves internally because this is the industry that we're in and this is what we sell. And those business outcomes, they go beyond the strategies that we would have, for example, this year. So these are the business outcomes that we would like to have, sorry, in the foreseeable future. Um, 
Another thing as well is that we don't want to have material downtime for our services because what we are having, the services that we're having, is critical for our customers as well. So we would like to have uptime. And of course, finally, high customer satisfaction, which is an outcome that many organizations would like to have anyway. So what could be the potential risks to this? Supply chain attacks, if we introduce malware to our customers, it would be really bad for reputation, bad for credibility. We would like to make sure that we mitigate that, we reduce that. We could have data leaks as well, which is the same, bad for reputation. And then we could also lose control of our infrastructure. And if that happens, then attackers would then be using our infrastructure, taking down our services, and then impacting our customers. All right, so if those are my risks, what are the security outcomes then that we need to achieve in order to mitigate these risks and give these business outcomes a higher chance of being accomplished? Supply chain attacks are they're quite challenging because it's very multifaceted. I mean, this morning we were judging startups um, in the EXO panel, and it was about supply chain security. And everyone recognized just how multifaceted and complicated our digital supply chains are nowadays. And therefore, to protect our organizations from it, we need to enable people who are closest and working directly with our vendors, with our suppliers, with the different touch points in our supply chain, with a lot of people in the organization, actually, and elevate the level of cybersecurity thinking that they are having, for them to be thinking that cybersecurity is part of the work that they do in defending our organization, defending the supply chain, and ensuring that we only push forward secure software to our customers. And then it also engages with cybersecurity being shifted to the left when it comes to accountability, because if these people who have the processes, the procurement, for instance, the legal people who build the contracts, if they are empowered and accountable to bake cybersecurity into these contracts, then we have a bigger chance of accomplishing these business outcomes of having this credibility and making sure that our customers, we don't cause problems to our customers, and building in cybersecurity rather than bolting it after a fact. Major opportunities could be that maybe our IT is cloudifying, or maybe our finance is revamping their process, and there's, this is an opportunity to build a more secure by design finance. Key initiatives, existing ones, could be your current ISMS, external audits, you can, that can be a tailwind as well, which helps you in your organization. And then there could be things that I would then need to build in. For instance, if the organization does not have DevSecOps yet, perhaps this is the time, or perhaps this is the time to evolve your DevSecOps to the next level. Key resources. So in this area, it would be good to identify both internal and external resources that you have everything that helps contribute to your initiatives in order to accomplish these security outcomes. And as said earlier, if there are already too many of this, maybe that also begs the question, do you have duplicate solutions? Do you have things that don't really provide you the right level of security anymore, but could be costing you? And speaking of costs, if you look at the examples here, they don't have monetary values, but they are very easy to assign monetary values to. External consultant fees, you can assign money there. CISO office salaries, MDR service subscription, your security training platform subscription. And then you can actually take a look at how much your cybersecurity program could cost if you implement it. You can also then make decisions. So I was mentioning earlier about what can you deprecate? What can you remove? But one of the security outcomes, for instance, in this page that I would like to accomplish is to shift all of the different initiatives, technologies, the processes, as left as possible to the people who are accountable and can do something about it and shouldn't be left with IT security, product security, or the CISO office. And this is then the area that I would need to zoom in and take more focus in. We have had presenters who were sharing about the challenges that we're facing in Ukraine at the moment. And as CISOs, 
Because we're so bogged down with risk management at times, we forget that what we are actually doing is securing the digital society, one organization at a time. Because our organizations, the software we build, they don't exist in a vacuum. We have customers, we have suppliers, we are all living in this interconnected digital web where we are trying to secure our communities, but that security spreads throughout the whole web. And to be honest, we need all the tools we can get because with the immaturity of the field comes the challenges of how do we explain these things? How do we anchor ourselves after all the far fighting that we have to do every now and then? Sometimes we need a central point an anchor, or dare I say, a home to come back to. And my hope is that this canvas, like after all of the chaos of our fighting, could provide you a central point, could help you center you that this is a cybersecurity program that you're running, you're evolving, and it doesn't answer your challenge of, it doesn't replace your metrics, but it gives you the right kind of place to say, like, what are the things that I should measure? And it may not replace your in-depth technical details, but even your technical people would not challenge this as being too fluffy because it shows the starting point of implementation. And the best part is that you can have a single model that you can use for conversation across the different layers of the organization and actually aim for effectiveness so that we can get understanding, alignment, and get our program executed. I will be around Sphere um, this afternoon, tomorrow morning. If you want to discuss, if you want to spar about how this can be applied in your organizations, feel free to approach me. But for now, thank you for your time, and thanks for listening. <laughs>